Good morning, this is November India Zero Zulu from SDR Zone. Today we're going to uh, take a look at uh, station integration to support the series of articles that have been uh, appearing on the website. Uh, you were just listening to Akuso with uh, Japan and uh, you could uh, hear that it uh, was coming in very very nicely today um, it's just uh, eavesdropping on a couple of uh, hams having a conversation there well let's um, dig into this I think the first thing uh, we want to do is uh, get some disclaimers out of the way so uh, this video is being shot on a uh, iPad so my apologies for that but uh, given the um, breadth and number of screens that have to be covered and uh, looking at the equipment and all, I needed some kind of portable camera. And uh, this was the, the best option that I had right now. Uh, my second disclaimer is uh, I had a little surgery recently, sinus surgery, so I uh, want some medication. So uh, everything I say might not be correct and uh, may not come off perfect. So uh, my apologies for any of uh, those glitches that we might have in today's video. All that said, why don't we take a look around and uh, look at the equipment that we have here in the shack. Um, so I'm going to pull back here and uh, what you'll see is the uh, main primary quad set of displays. So I have four uh, monitors. They're all running at uh, 1600 by uh, 1200 resolution. Um, as you can see that gives me a lot of real estate and you can see quite a bit of software running on these screens here. We'll go through each of those here in a minute and uh, show you how it's all connected together. Um, then over here on the left I have another computer um, and this is where we'll actually start I think and then we'll kind of work our way from uh, left to right. So uh, in, in the shack here I actually have uh, two racks, one on the left and the one on the right. And uh, on the one on the left I have a computer that I use for skimming and there's a printer. And uh, you can see below that uh, there's uh, some DJ knobs and uh, computer keyboard. So uh, we'll come back and cover the skimmer computer and the software in a minute. Let's, uh, let's move our way around a little bit more. Um, so here um, next down below the quad monitors, let's get you oriented. So we're going to come back down left here in the corner. You can see a couple of VGA switch boxes. Um, those are for another computer. Um, it's actually the old Shack computer, Big Bertha. I don't have Big Bertha running right now, but I do plan on uh, loading that up with Linux uh, since that should have quite enough power for a modern version of Linux. Um, above the VGA switch boxes, you see a Steinberg uh, UR44 audio input device. Um, it's really uh, meant uh, for the musician's world. It's a XLR type interface box. Um, I use this to feed the audio from my Onan um, into the computer and to use with software. You've probably uh, maybe read some of that uh, in my ham audio analysis and software defined audio. Uh, likewise, just below that, uh, you're seeing a Fire Studio. It's a Personas audio input, and that's another one. And I use that one for my uh, mic audio here. So uh, the mic is directly hooked to the uh, Firewire Personas and uh, then above that Personas interface is an Art Clean Box and uh, that's a hum and uh, electrical interference remover. Um, you may be familiar with uh, the iBox. Uh, I used to use one of those with my Flex. Um, I just went to this Art Clean box um, since I'm using pretty much all standard type uh, audio connectors now. Connected to uh, the top output 
device that remember we're feeding the audio from the on and into the top one um, and that's the receive audio um, we have a couple of iHome speakers that I'm just using for right now uh, I plan on switching them back you can see there the background uh, bigger set of speakers but uh, I don't have those hooked up those are hooked to just the computer right now um, so uh, down below that you can see a little USB monitor. I don't have anything up and on that. Um, usually I use a software package called TrueRTA when I'm uh, looking at signal levels and I use the oscilloscope function on that. Um, and I can look at the signals or I can feed in two radio signals and compare them and uh, see which one's receiving better. Alright, let's uh, continue moving to the right here. So, um, the next thing you see here is a green herring uh, engineering rotator controller and uh, it's the deluxe model and uh, that also is fed into the computer via serial connection or actually USB and then to the right of that we have a wave node a WN2D it's a watt meter um, and we'll take a look at that uh, you can see uh, the information on both of these displays locally but they both um, also have uh, software running on the computer that I'm using with them. Over here on the far right of the desktop, I have a uh, router and a switch. The uh, router provides a DNS for my local network, and the switch is how everything's uh, connected together and uh, back to my main network in the house. Moving on over to the right rack. Um, down here on the bottom shelf you can see an Elecraft KPA 500 amp. I have that uh, paired with an Elecraft uh, KAT 500 antenna tuner. Uh, this gives me auto band switching and tuning. Uh, it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, over on the left you see an MFJ um, dummy load. I use that for tuning my awning. The Versa tuner isn't really used right now. I sometimes use that with my wire a G5RV antenna, but I don't use that antenna much right now. Um, and then to the right of those, you see my QS1R. Using that with the skimmer. Again, we'll talk about that more in a minute. A buffer controller and an AB switch that allows me to switch that buffer between radios when I have more than one radio hooked up. And uh, then moving on up, we'll get to the heart of it all. We've got the uh, Onan Apache Labs 100D. The uh, DX Engineering RTR1A is a uh, uh, protection circuit, uh, one of actually many functions that it can play. But in my case, um, I have uh, my hex beam hooked to this and my Onan hooked to it. And uh, then I have some splitters. Um, that you can see up here in the corner that hang off of it and um, essentially what I'm doing is um, splitting the signal and sending it to uh, my radio like my QS1R or uh, sometimes down here in the empty slot I'll have my KX3 and uh, amplifier and um, basically what this switch does is it protects uh, my other radios when I transmit so that the on and RF uh, the transmit RF doesn't hurt the other radios so um, you can see I've got a network connection coming out of the on and it goes back down to the switch and router I described earlier got a manual uh, watt meter over there for barefoot operations and a couple of power supplies uh, you can see I use the Astron as the main one I'm not really using the other one <clears throat> sometimes I use that when I have the KX3 in the shack all right well that kind of gives you the high level equipment tour so um, what we need to do next is uh, dive into the software. So um, I think we'll, um, we'll talk about things from a functionality perspective. So uh, one of the things that uh, became important to me as a ham was being able to kind of understand the propagation condition. So at this point we'll start looking through the software and the way we want to do that is um, I'll start was talking about propagation a little bit. Um, I like to know what the conditions are like, um, whether I'm going to have smooth sailing or rough sailing, um, where I can reach and where I can't. And to help me do that, I have a couple of things going here. So uh, let's go up here to the top left, I'm sorry, the top right monitor, 
And you can see I have a program called Iono Probe 1.39. And below that I have a piece of software called HamCap. Iono Probe uh, talks to a server that is collecting and broadcasting uh, solar information, sunspots, uh, geomagnetic storms, um, whatever it is you might have. And it interprets it into um, numbers that we can use to predict uh, propagation. HamCap uses the government's old VOACAP propagation engine and takes that sunspot information from IONO probe live and uh, creates a, a propagation forecast by band. So um, if you looked uh, close here, and I won't switch these because uh, my hands are kind of full here, but uh, if you looked close there, you could see that I can switch bands. And what it would do is it would sh um, also switch uh, propagation views for those bands. So the light areas are areas that I can, in theory, um, reach given my antennas and equipment, which I program into uh, HamCap. Uh, just basically type those in. It keeps track of that, and then I get a, uh, a map of a prediction um, as far as propagation conditions go. So the dark areas are the areas that I would have a more difficult time reaching. Um, that also works with DX Atlas, by the way, so uh, there's a connection that provides a similar view. DX Atlas can give you all kinds of other detailed information that you might find useful, uh, zones, etc., um, or detailed coordinate type information uh, when you're hamming. I, I don't use it a lot, but uh, sometimes it's kind of interesting if I'm uh, curious about where somebody's located at and I want more detail. So that's one way of getting uh, propagation information. Um, it's based off of uh, my location, my station equipment. But um, another way that I get propagation information is over here with my skimmer server. So uh, the QS1R is uh, hooked up via the splitters live uh, to my hex beam. And I have it set to uh, look at the five most common bands that I use and um, skim for propagation. And uh, by skimming, what it does is it looks for uh, CW signals that are live and active on the band. And it decodes those. And um, it'll actually come up with the, the call sign um, and then it'll give a signal strength. Um, and then it also uh, obviously knows what frequency it located that on. And it'll keep track of all of that and it'll um, actually can feed a spotter uh, server, but it has its own, um, which you connect to via Telnet in that top right corner. And um, the engine here by VE3SUN uh, DX monitor is able to translate that and superimpose it onto a map in a couple of different ways. So what you're looking at there uh, in the bottom left corner is the built-in monitor and it just shows, uh, you can see I'm in the, about the center of the United States there, what it shows is uh, where my station is reaching or basically what uh, CW signals are reaching me and I'm able to interpret. Um, this keeps a live 20-minute uh, rolling view, so uh, after 20 minutes the old ones will roll off and new ones keep rolling on. Um, there's not a limit that I've seen of what it can collect. It can get quite uh, full sometimes, but um, you know, that that's probably a pretty average view right there. Maybe a little on the light side. Now, on the right, um, more for fun, kind of uh, uh, what I call one of my toys, um, the program also has an interface to Google Earth and uh, what we do with Google Earth is uh, it also finds those call signs on the map and then uh, zooms in each time it finds one. So uh, maybe we'll see it catch one here and you can see uh, live where it'll zoom out and uh, go find that call sign and then zoom in. 